Hi, we're here with uh, Angela and Rayla and John today. We are talking about mentoring and the three of them are part of something called the Brevard Youth Leadership Council. And we're gonna let them just introduce themselves before we uh, get into a few questions. So Angela, why don't we start with you? Sure, thank you. Hi, my name is Angela Oliver Burgess, and I am the founder and president of the organization called Smile for Budgie. And we are very fortunate to be working with the support of uh, the Bard Family Partnership in developing and um, coordinating the work of the Brevard Youth Leadership Council. And we started it um, about three years ago, first through a training program and then through the actual launch of the council that was established exactly two years ago. Um, I know John and Rayla are gonna be speaking more about the work of the council, um, but I can say in terms of the mentorship component, um, that is one of the key priorities that the council identified themselves that is um, instrumental that every single young person in care has a mentor if they want one to ensure that they can truly thrive and reach their full potential. So we're super excited about this program and um, I look forward to sharing a little bit more about that later. Thanks. Rayla? Hello everyone watching. Um, my name is Rayla James and I'm currently the Vice President of the Brevard Youth Leadership Council. Um, I've been on the council for about a year and a half, I wanna say. Um, and I was in foster care from the age of 14 to 18 and aged out. Um, part of the mentoring that I'm involved in was serving as the youth leader for the priority three that Ms. Angela was talking about. Um, and again, we were working, um, advising um, Brevard Family Partnership um, with, you know, developing in the early steps before it was handed over to Ready for Life to be um, taken under its wing, pretty much. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I am a, uh, no, not a freshman, I'm a sophomore at Eastern Florida State College, um, and I will be starting at UCF in the fall. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> thank you for being here, Rayla. John, yeah. go ahead. Sure, thank you. Uh, my name is John Watson. I am the president of the Brevard Youth Leadership Council. Uh, I'm 19, and like Rayla, I am a sophomore at Eastern Florida State College. Uh, I also hope to be transferring to UCF in the fall. Uh, I was in care for about five years, um, and, and to which I aged out at 18, uh, and I've been enrolled in the PEST program since. Fortunately, I've been able to stay with, with my foster family. And when I aged out, I rent a room currently, uh, which is where I reside today. Um, and I've been a part of this council since the beginning with, with Angela um, creating the academy. I, I served there and, you know, it's been a privilege to be able to work with these youth and Angela as well as other uh, great foundations that have come up like Ready for Life and, and Miss Corey. So, uh, you know, I'm just really happy to be here and, and hopefully be able to talk about my experience and how important mentors are to me. Thank you, John. Well, I am grateful you guys are all willing to take this time with me. So we'll just jump in. Um, I have a few questions for each of you. So Rayla, you are currently in college and successfully living on your own. And I have also gotten to witness on several occasions how you are a great leader in in your community and with transitioning foster youth, you're quick to help and um, quick to help out a friend or peer. Uh, was there any kind of supportive adult or mentor who played a role in where you are today? Um, yes, for sure. So uh, my original case in foster care came from Palm Beach County. So when, when I first entered the system, I had a guardian at Lightham who helped me out a lot down there, actually taught me to drive and was able to um, I don't know if she put me on her insurance or how that worked out, but I drove her car and we went out every week and then she took me to get my, my permit to, or my, well, she got my permit test. Then I started driving, then took me to get my license test. Um, and that was incredible and very grateful to her. And then, um, when I moved to Brevard towards the end of my time in foster care, I had another guardian at Lightham, um, who is still my mentor today. I'm more connected with him um, than I am with the other one. And he helped me to graduate high school a year ahead of my class. 
um, and really figure out how to plan and execute goals that I set for myself using a timeline, um, mm. which is probably a method he could patent <laughs> because I think it's great. Basically, um, you just set up a piece of paper horizontally and write like a number line, but put dates on it and then, you know, set out to motivate yourself to accomplish those things. Um, but he definitely helped me to where I am today to just organize my life um, and help me to organize my brain. Sometimes when I get like overwhelmed, he taught me how to categorize like my problems when I'm doing a brain dump. Um, so that's definitely been helpful for sure. Um, and even now to this day, like I'm actually applying to UCF today and I just finished my accept or not acceptance letter. I wish I was accepted already. My application essay and he looked over it for me and um, has been helping me with that whole process too. So it's, I'm sure it's interesting for him to have been there helping me apply to my um, community college. Now he's helping me apply to UCF. So it's definitely, he's definitely been there for me more than like my, my real parents because they're not really in the picture. So he's basically, I guess like my dad sort of, he kind of calls me his daughter playfully, but um, definitely been there for me a lot. And helping me to just transition to independence and you know when I need to learn things about independence or have a question about taxes or like what I was telling you about the stimulus check because of the coronavirus like I called him when I was doing the paperwork because I didn't have anybody else well I could have called Miss Angela but I didn't want to bother her so I called him so he's definitely always been there for me and one of the first things I asked him was are you gonna leave me when I turn 18 and that was definitely something um, what I would encourage other mentors is to be in it for the long haul because a lot of these kids don't, like myself, don't have other people to depend on to learn life skills or ask questions to or just help to apply to college. Wow. Thank you so much for letting us know all that. I would agree your organizational skills are inspiring. We might <laughs> need to have your your mentor come and speak at our next. <laughs> yes. You could probably help a lot of us. Sounds like, well, thank you, Rayla. That's really, really inspiring to hear. Um, and being, thanks for being willing to share that. So John, um, you've talked about the role that your foster family has played in your life as, as a, a huge support to you and, and has, you know, just really played the role of, helping you become the person you are today, which is very inspiring to a lot of us um, who know you. So could you just tell us a little more about that and the connection you see between your foster family as mentors and your desire to build a stronger and better foster parent system? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I always have, my passion is, is honestly to be able to advocate for foster parents because, um, you know, they're, they really are the, the treasure of, of the, the child welfare system because without them, you know, I don't think we could be where we are today. Um, so when I aged out, basically, I'm uh, not when I aged out, I'm sorry, when I was put into care, uh, I was kind of thrown into it. Uh, I was very fortunate to only been to three homes, but uh, my first two homes were in very quick succession. Uh, and I, I feel like I probably would have, would have bounced around a lot more if I didn't get so lucky as I did. Um, well, when I first came into my, my current foster home where, where I'm currently living uh, today, uh, there was four other boys and, and you know, they all uh, loved the foster mother very dearly. They called her Ma, um, you know, and that's something that, that I picked up as well. Uh, it's just kind of a, a family setting and they, they gave me space, you know, and uh, I think that's something that's very important as, as a teenager is to be able to feel comfortable where you're living and, and not encroached on your privacy. Um, but I think the biggest, the thing that I always say to people is, you know, how did that work out for you? So they just wouldn't kick me out. So, uh, you know, regardless of what I did, when I'd been bounced around to relative care and in those two homes that I visited, uh, nothing that I did would, would affect them and uh, change their minds about, you know, who I am as a person. She always had very high expectations for me, always was pushing me and treated me differently from the other boys, which... Uh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't too fond of, but uh, kind of in hindsight now, I'm like, oh man, good thing, you know? So 
uh, yeah, I'm very lucky and, and they're, they're still my family, of course. You know, I attend family events and things like that. Uh, picked up a little bit of Creole because they are Haitian, but uh, nothing, nothing to go right home about. But, you know, I, I'm very fortunate where I am and I definitely encourage all foster families to stick with it. You know, don't, don't just uh, treat them as you would your own child, which is hard to say, uh, but is something that you should definitely strive to do and put into practice. Wow. Wow. Thank you, John, for sharing your experience. Um, yeah, it is really important. The, the long haul, like Rayla brought up, and just carrying that into, you know, mentoring. I think Angela would agree with me that all of, everybody everywhere has a story with a, a supportive adult in the background, whether it be family or adoptive family or foster family or friends that are family, we all have to, you know, allow ourselves to have that person in our lives that can push us and, you know, and also just stay and, and be in it with us for the long haul. So that is, those are great, great points you guys brought up. Um, so the last thing we wanted to, to talk about was um, just our mentor program at Ready for Life. I, I got to the great honor of, of being a witness of it at four, four or five days after we moved into our space. Um, you know, it was kind of bing, bang, boom, here we go. Um, but it had been in the works for a lot of months before that. And that's why I wanted to have the three of you, you on. Um, and it was out of that mentor meeting that I was even sp inspired to become a mentor um, and have been a mentor for the last couple months. Um, so as we develop the mentoring program at Ready for Life, Brevard, what do the three of you hope to see in terms of it becoming successful? Mm. Um, you want me to start? Sure. Yeah, um, yeah so um, no, first and foremost, I mean, I just think it's, we're so excited that Ready for Life now is um, taking this up as one of the, um, the key <laughs> initiatives um, for your organization as you move forward and working in partnership with the Brevard Youth Leadership Council and all of us. So we're really excited about this because Myself personally, like I spoke about before, when I, you know, we first started the program, um, really one of the most successful components has been the mentorship part, part of it that I've personally witnessed. Um, in, in addition to what John and Rayla have shared, you know, there have been other amazing young people who've come through our program and the ones that have really, truly thrived and that have worked and achieved their goals and have really transitioned in a successful way towards independence have been the one that have had that one caring adult, that, that mentor. And um, as what John and Rayla had shared about, you know, it's just somebody who is just really there to help guide um, through all of those important factors of when you're really transitioning into adulthood and whether it's housing, school, employment, or just being that lending ear, but really just having that confidence in somebody that they're going to be there for you no matter what. And I think what um, Rayla was sharing a bit earlier, and I think what in terms of response to the question is um, one of the key components I really hope to see is that when somebody comes on as a mentor that, you know, we always talk about it as a light, as a, as a lifelong relationship, you know, because I think we, we've seen the success is not just a short term six month, but it's really, it's a true partnership and um, it's a true relationship that continues and fosters and grows. And I think that's a really um, a key component is to really see that sustainability and that long-term um, impact that a mentor can have on a young person. And the young person has on the mentor, right? It's a, it's, it's a beautiful relationship that, that both can share. And so um, I'm hoping that that's what will transpire as well as the mentorship program continues to grow, that not only that more young people will have that opportunity to have a mentor and that that will be a very long-term relationship that um, will be there, especially in those critical years of moving towards independence and um, in, independent living. Thank you. Rayla? Um, yes, yeah, so some things I hope to see be successful at Ready for Life, um, along with Angela, is just 
the long-term relationship that the youth and the mentors have with each other, um, that it continues and grows. Um, and just to witness um, working in collaboration with you, like the youth who are, you know, succeeding and they're seeing the mentors help them and how far they have grown because of that relationship. Um, and I hope it brings a sense of warmth in the community as well, because they, others can see like, wow, look, this is what happened with them when they got a mentor, um, rather than some youth may see it as, oh, another person telling me what to do. They could see it as an opportunity to have a relationship with someone who cares about you and is going to be there for you because a lot of times foster kids don't have people like that in their lives. Thank you, Rayla. Beautiful. John? Yeah, absolutely. I think what Rayla said, you know, hits it right on the nail. Uh, and Angela as well. I think, you know, that's that's something that's very important is having that that committing, that lasting relationship. Um, so since those great points have already been brought up, uh, I just think that it's important that the mentors and the youth can find some sort of common ground uh, because I feel like the first beginning stages are the most difficult. Uh, finally, you know, trying to get to know that youth, uh, I'm sure is very difficult. I can definitely see it, you know, as from my perspective in hindsight, from how uh, my guardian ad litem, who I attribute a lot of my success to, uh, as well as my foster parents, uh, I was not not the nicest kid, you know, so uh, she kind of had to force herself in, into my situation, whether I liked it or not. It became a point where I could not, uh, I could not really understand without her perspective. I could not get the whole picture without asking her opinion. So I think just having that kind of relationship form, once that's there, I think whether or not, you know, uh, the mentor is, is trying for that lasting relationship, I think it will happen because that, that kind of bond is something that doesn't form in, in a couple weeks or a couple months. But, uh, you know, I think it's something that, that definitely will lead to success and having the youth be engaged is just finding that kind of common ground, uh, whether it be through another person or, you know, some type, some type of game, exercises, basketball, sports, you know, anything like that. Uh, I just hope that, you know, mentors and mentees can find some sort of common ground to be able to relate to and, and make a lasting relationship. Thank you. Thank you, John. Well, all three of you, Angela, Rayla, John, I really appreciate you taking the time to be with me today, to be partnering with Ready for Life, Brevard, and to really just bring us all together as a community through what you all are standing for and fighting for. Um, it really does, it's, it blesses me. I know it blesses so many people, um, that warmth that you're talking about and through relationships. Um, that is what we're all about at Ready for Life as well as we um, just try to surround, you know, youth who are aging out. And we are just really grateful to have such incredible people with us. So thanks again and have a fantastic day. And we will see you hopefully soon at the Ready for Life Center when all this passes. But until then, stay well. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.